Welcome back, everybody, to Pinoy Crossover. So let's get down and dirty the issues of the NBA. So what's up in the NBA, Mark? The biggest, the biggest news that you received so far this mm -hmm. whole season, the so far the the most you know humble, quiet player that we've superstar really that we've had recently the past few years. Kawhi has recently said he doesn't want to be a spur, and it blew up the internet. It blew up Instagram. Everybody, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, every Instagram page, every basketball Instagram page said, what is happening with Kawhi? What's going to happen with Kawhi? He wants to go somewhere else, especially the Lakers. So what are your thoughts on this? Like, what happened between him and the Spurs? Like, what did, not just maybe now, but then the past year when he, mm -hmm. you know, there was all these injuries that he went through and that he wanted to get second opinion. What, what, are his, what is happening with his relationship with the Spur? Mm. I guess for the past few days, just reading upon it, I guess Ka you could tell Kawhi is really, really hurt because, because of what Greg Popovich, his head coach, and Tony Parker and some other teammates have been saying about Kawhi Leonard and his injury, uh, dealing with the, his injury and the organization about, you know, not wanting to play or, or some other, uh, uh, other things along the lines. So it does tell me that Kawhi, as a quiet guy, it, it show, it's showing that he's a really he's hurt. He's hurt by what his organization has done to him, which I, I believe he, I, I thought he was going to stay there for a long term. But now him saying that he wants out, he wants to go to the Lakers, and for sure, whatever happens in 2019, he'll want to go to the Lakers for sure. But right now, he wants out, at least trying to get out, get a trade, uh, opt out from his contract, uh, either yeah, and try to go to the Lakers as soon as possible. And I know Greg Popovich, they had their meeting. Um, in LA, or I think in LA or somewhere. Diego, where he lives, yeah. Yeah, and, and they had the meeting, and I don't think it went well either. So, Aquai Leonard is still st sticking to his gut. He wants out of S S San Antonio, which, I mean, it's it's a hard situation that's, that's happening throughout, since the beginning of the season, the 2017 season, and now on, on, on all the way here to draft and free agency that's coming up. So, it, it does suck that Kawhi, you know, really wants out from San Antonio. I'm personally so sad because Spurs was my team. I loved Spurs before the Golden State rise, and it's just so sad to see such a great player, arguably the, the second best player, because he plays both ends of the court, Kawhi Leonard, the claw. It's just, it's just sad to see such a great player go down that misorganization and that kind of drama that's happening. And I, I, really, I really hope that that meeting could have done something about it. But again, losing Kawhi Leonard is a big hit, not to just the Spurs, but their, I guess, their playoff run, because they were always up there, semifinals, finals. But losing Kawhi is such a big part of, I guess, that modern, modern day basketball. Now it's hard to compete with the other teams that are rising up too. So it feels like Spurs really need to, to do some strategic moves with Kawhi. Mm -hmm. So this, this draft and this offseason is very important for them to get the, big, the biggest bang for their buck. But it's just sad that Kawhi couldn't get back on the floor. And I'm not sure what all the reasons behind it, but personally, uh, it hurts me. It hurts me right here. Because I was there with Tim Duncan. I was, there, I was there with Tony Parker. And I didn't know Tony Parker could be so mean talking about Kawhi like that. Tony Parker, come on, man. You and Kawhi were boys. I don't think it came from, I don't think it came straight from him. I think it was more of a push between uh, the organization. Like, Pop has a really strong influence on everybody in the locker room and every, every player that they have. So, yeah, it, it just makes it hard for them because it's not that Kawhi said, I want to be traded. He specifically said, I wanted to play for the Lakers. Like, what do you do? You literally went from 30, like 29 teams options to see how this much value one. you can get from Kawhi to him, oh, bam. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's opting out next. If he doesn't get what he wants, he's leaving next year. So what a lot of teams can't, you know, give up as much value, as much assets as they can to get a player like Kawhi because they're not, um, Kawhi's already saying, if you don't trade me to the Lakers, I'll, I'll play for one year for you, but I'm, I'm set to say, you know, to go and play for the Lakers. And it, it and it kind of uh, it's kind of ironic a player like Kawhi in terms of his personality, his uh, character, someone who's you know humble, quiet, uh, not so into the spotlight, to want to play for a team like Lakers where yeah. it's it's about you know it's about fanciness, it's about being you know the limelight, being that star. That's what Lakers is about, and he's literally going to a place that is totally opposite of his what we know of him, mm -hmm. or maybe we don't know. <laughs> Enough, but maybe at the, maybe when he was talking. yeah, maybe he was, oh, my, yo, when his, maybe. <laughs> he was in his at the Spurs. He was very limited. He was getting uh, he was getting a lot of uh, maybe limitations as of what he could be yeah, or what he system. could do because he has to fit into the culture of the Spurs. So now maybe that's why Lakers is for him so that he can kind of get 
more freedom to be more of himself. I don't know. Mm-hmm. One thing. I, one thing I think that I, I don't think Kawhi Leonard will be on us on the Spurs organization by the end by the beginning of next season. Um, will he go to Lakers? I I think so. They'll they'll try to mix them because Spurs if if they let Kawhi walk without getting any you know return back, it'll hurt the organization even more because you got mm-hmm. Tony Parker and manager Ginobili Gino, Gino, still there. Um, still, I, I know they're just just two players. They're barely re- they're barely playing. Like they're almost retired. That's and at this point, yeah. at this point, with Kawhi Leonard wanting to leave and Tony Parker and Ginobili on the back end of their career, yeah. is at that point now Spurs they're gonna go they're gonna restart their they need organization. To get assets, yeah. yeah, and uh, that might start with Greg Popovich. Who knows if he's gonna retire as well because uh, he's gonna also coach the USA team as well. But I mean. It, there's a lot of aspects in this situation, but I do believe Kawhi Leonard won't be in a Spurs jersey by the end of, by the start of next season. Spurs jersey? And he won't be in. The he Spurs. won't be. Okay. He won't be. Yeah. Let's he look at be. let's look at Kawhi as a player. Is the Lakers like you were just mentioning? It doesn't match his personality. But where? What other teams? If you know, where? What would be the ideal spot for Kawhi aside from the Lakers? If if I was to yeah. if I was to kind of see. Uh, a win-to-win situation between Kawhi and the the Spurs. I would say that he has to. He they, he would he should be okay if they trade him to a team like Boston because Boston uh, clearly has the most assets to offer out of anyone uh, out of any teams in the NBA. So they're more willing to to trade players and assets to get a player like in Kawhi's uh, caliber. And the thing is that uh, they're gonna get the most value. Like Spurs is gonna get the most trade value out of anyone really. Uh, just because of the fact that Danny H can offer a player like uh, Kyrie, a player like Gordon Hayward, and draft mm-hmm. picks, so that's that's a good building block for Spurs to get, mm-hmm. and and for uh, no one, no other team can offer that kind of um, that kind of incentive, and, and it, it helps them restart their franchise, and it puts Kawhi on a winning situation right away. Yeah. He's already he's on, he's on a team that has a, a coach that is close to uh, Popovich in terms of coaching ability. A franchise that has a future in terms of draft picks that's coming up to them and young core like Jalen Brown and Tatum, Horford. So he has those type of players that can help him succeed. And he's going to be in the East. So he's automatically going to be an all-star and automatically going to be in the playoffs. And he has a better chance of getting into the finals when he doesn't have to face Houston or uh, Golden State at the first, second round of the playoffs. Yeah. So Boston, I think it's the best, best, landing, spot best landing spot for him if he didn't mention that he wanted to play for the Lakers. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I don't know. I don't, like... Him wanting to go Lakers was like, why Lakers though? Yeah, yeah. Despite despite all the rumors about you know LeBron James and Paul George wanting to go to Lakers, they're not there yet. Mm-hmm. So I mean, Boston will be a, a, a good fit. Uh, Kawhi Leonard being there, I mean, and Kyrie Irving had talked about um, not he, he not talked about being playing on the Spurs, but his future uh, in this upcoming free agency in the next few years. He doesn't know his future with Boston. Well, he doesn't know the future because he can't say anything about it right now. And then there's also rumors about Kyrie Irving wanting to play it for the Knicks. But that you know aspect of having um, Hayward, Kyrie Irving maybe going to Spurs and having all those young guys that already showed off their talent in the playoffs and just almost beat Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah. add Kawhi Leonard to that um, addition, I mean... It would be great. It mm-hmm. would be great for the East. I mean, great for Boston, but I don't know about the East, though. Yeah. Raptors will be uh, getting knocked down. <laughs> Let's talk. You just mentioned also the LeBron and Paul George situation. LeBron, if LeBron and Kawhi and Paul George did team up, is that even a good trio ensemble? I, well, like, anything with LeBron automatically puts you in the uh, title contender, right? Mm-hmm. And anything with Kawhi puts you even in a final contender, <laughs> a finals team contender. And I think putting an icing on the cake is just a player like George, who uh, I think he he's more of a player that can adapt. He's more like a, a Chris Bosh or a uh, uh, Kevin Love caliber type of player who can adjust. Yeah. And uh, the difference with him is that he's a two-way player too. So imagine having two of the best defenders in the league in one team, or in, in Kawhi and Paul George, and adding LeBron to that, who can just you know uh, know how to put everybody in the best position and to put everybody. To succeed, so not, and he's gonna find ways to get these two uh, to play at their best, uh, at the best, and to get the, the right role players to kind of surround him. Uh, I I think they'd be a really good team. Uh, I would put them ahead of uh, Houston Rockets right away, wow. just because of the fact that uh, they can, they'll have defenders that can slow down Chris Paul and and James Harden, and that's their main engine. Mm-hmm. So if you have a player that like Paul George that's just running Chris Paul or James Harden everywhere, and then you have Kawhi also that's doing the same thing with one or the other. What are they gonna do? And then LeBron is by, and then LeBron is gonna have 
every little uh, freedom to be, you know, to be the best that he can be on the offense inside. That's just scary, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, if it, uh, that that suit, that new super team that could happen. Yeah. I mean, I, I I talked about a few episodes ago. I would never. I'm not going to count on Golden State anymore. Um, that they're going to win. They're going to win the West. But having a Lakers team with Kawhi, uh, LeBron, and Paul George would be contention. Not not you know beating Golden State per se, but like maybe contention with Houston right below Golden State, or and knock down uh, OKC, who would obviously they lose. Uh, Paul George and still have Russell Westbrook and Carmel Anthony and then Spurs organization who if they lose Kawhi Leonard will probably look like they're going to restart the organization mm-hmm. again mm-hmm. so I mean there is there is a lot of contention and it's promising to see if that ever happens I mean and oh, given the fact that you know they still have Lonzo Ball if he stay if he stays on the Lakers whatever happens it will have be, to be a sign and trade to get Kawhi if could they want to be able to sign George and LeBron as a free agent they have to sign and trade Kawhi so it's either they'll lose uh, Lonzo or Brandon Ingram, mm-hmm. uh, they they won't be able to sign Julius Randle. So it's uh, Kuzma is probably the only player that's guaranteed to stay if this is to happen, which is a really good fit, right? Kuzma is a Kuzma, really good role player. Like yeah. he doesn't need the ball in his hand; he can shoot, knock down, finish. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect role player. 